another day in the fish room. Going to be giving some updates on some of the projects we've been working on. Going to officially start working on getting a new rack over here and see what else we get into. You can see I'm starting to collect the tanks I need store by store. Like I said before, at least in my area in New Jersey, the Petcos, the 10 closest Petcos to me are out of stock of most of the tank sizes, especially the 20 highs, which is mostly what I need. I was able to grab one 40 breeder in the back there at one of the stores that uh, they were marking as they didn't have. So I found a hidden, so that was a good find. Uh, but it's a beautiful day outside today, uh, the middle of November here, and it's usually really cold, but it's a beautiful day. I didn't plan on drilling any tanks today. I like to do it all at once and get out of the way because it's a little stressful for me just because I have the chance of cracking any of these tanks. Um, but we're going to do it today because it's nice out and I think that's better for the glass that it's not freezing cold when I'm drilling into it. Got the drilling set up here. I've shown this in detail in another video that I'm going to link in the top right corner. I show all the parts and how I do this and some strategies and some tips there. Before I get drilling though, we do have an audience. We have my chickens over here who are going to start yelling at me if I don't visit them. So let me take a trip over, show you guys. So these are our chickens. We've got four Rhode Island Reds, which are standard egg laying chickens that are these guys right here. And then we have three Silkies. They get, they get all excited here. I need to give them some treats here. Normally I have mealworms and stuff. I didn't bring it out with me, but they, they go crazy for grass. So the silkies are obviously the black one and the white one there. They've got the funny heads there. And they're, they do lay eggs. They're a little bit smaller and they aren't actually sexed when you get them as chicks. So we got them all as chicks. Uh, the Rhode Island Reds are I think it's 95 or 99 percent guaranteed that they're female the silkies you have to kind of hope you get mostly females so we ended up with one rooster there call him penny he's uh the boss around here doesn't like you messing with his ladies and if you guys know of any plants that i have in the fish room that are safe to feed the chickens uh let me know i know duckweed is safe um, but luckily I don't have too much duckweed. I'm gonna check for some eggs while we're here. Yep, we got some fresh eggs. So these guys are pretty cool to have. They're fun. Got little personalities on them. Got the smallest silky there. She's special. She's a runt, looks like. And the rooster is also a silky. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but because he's a silky, I feel like he's not really acting too much like a rooster, so uh, versus a normal, maybe a Rhode Island red rooster. I don't know too much about chickens. We've had them since Easter, so we've had them less than a year, uh, but they seem to be too, doing pretty well. We so far haven't had to deal with any predators. I think what we set up is okay for them right now, and they're definitely loving life. Got all six drilled without cracking any, so it's a really good day. Uh, the 40 breeder I'm going to hold off on drilling just because I have to figure out the rack's not here yet, so I have to see what fits where. Uh, the 40 breeders might get their own rack separate, but feeling good so far. Just need to find a bunch of more 20 gallons somewhere in New Jersey, maybe even New York. I thought I got through the day without any tanks cracking, but we can see this 10 gallon here with the gardener eyed killifish in it. The water line is pretty low. Uh, it's never a good sign. So when I checked the back bulkhead, uh, the tank actually cracked. So we can see the back here. Probably not gonna see the one that's cracked, but you could just see the setup here. What happened was one of these, I had two pictures up here uh, that fell. I guess the command strips gave for some reason. Uh, the walls are getting pretty cold now as winter approaches. These are poured concrete in the basement. So to the touch, they're very cold. I don't know if that had something to do with it, but the picture actually fell and hit the bulkhead, which caused the tank to crack around the bulkhead. So it looks like it stopped at this line, which is okay for now because this is not uh, an emergency. The filter's still working, the fish have plenty of water. 
Uh, I'll have to take it off the auto water change system just so that it doesn't rise above the leaking point. And I, good thing the dollar per gallon sale is happening now because I'll just go buy another 10 gallon, drill that one while I'm drilling some of the other 20s and replace this tank. This row has kind of become my fry grow out area. We've got the long fin white cloud minnows growing really fast in here. This tank I'm prepared to put the mop of the Bozeman Eye rainbow fish in here. See it's perfect for a new fry, especially rainbows just because there's going to be a lot of microorganisms and algae in the plants on the side of the glass. Helps me uh, raise them initially before I get them on the ceramicron or the live baby brine. We've got the grow outs of the black Madaka rice fish, even though in this light, I'm looking through the camera, they don't look black, but uh, they do in person. Probably something with the light with the salvinia coming through. Here we've got another batch of the Miyuki rice fish. These guys are about three weeks old. And about at a month old are the silver banded rice fish fry. Already at this size, I could tell the unique fin pattern. I'll see if I can zoom in on one. But I'm excited to have these numbers up. Uh, most of this first batch I'll probably end up keeping just because I have six adults. I do have another mop to pull of the adults right now. So we'll just start cranking them out and hopefully get a larger adult breeder breeding group pretty soon. Here's the mop that I'm gonna pull. It's been in there for about two weeks. And what's different about this mop is there's only the rainbow fish in here and the bristlenose. The previous mop that we pulled had rosy barbs in here and Corydoras in here, which I'm sure were eating up a lot of the eggs. So I'm hoping that this mop is filled with more eggs and we get even more fry. That first mop, we did get a decent number of fry. I'll show them a little bit later. You can see the males here are looking really good. Not a lot of females in here but I did keep a bunch of the first batch that I ever spawned of them. Hopefully getting a lot more females. You can see the super red bristlenose are looking really good. Their color is really good. I do have a cave back there. I do have one dominant male who likes to hang out in there, but I don't think the females are ready to breed just yet. Here's the spawn from that first mop. I would say we have anywhere between 20 and 30 fish. Decent sized spawn, but these guys do take a little bit longer to grow out. So when I do spawn them and raise them, I want to make sure that there's a lot of them. Otherwise, it almost isn't worth the time that it takes to raise them, this tank space that they take up, the amount you have to feed. So those are all factors I have to consider uh, just when I'm raising them for profit. But these guys are looking good. I would give these guys maybe another month or two before they're a little over an inch to be sellable size, but already at this size, you could tell by the shape that they're looking like little rainbow fish. You could see the cherry shrimp uh, swimming around there to kind of scale the size. Here's my breeding group of the orange LeMay rice fish. These are the strain that have the nice sparkle to the body. My camera will focus and pick it up. So these guys are really nice to look at from the side. For some reason, I can't get these guys to spawn in huge numbers. Usually when I do this setup with the Java moss and just pulling the mop out, the moss out after two weeks, I get a ton of fry. I've done that with all the strains. Uh, the most recent is the Miyuki strain. You can see this is one mop and there's a ton of fry in there. But for some reason with these guys, I can't get them to spawn in high numbers. Here's a spawn that I pulled of the orange lemays a couple weeks back. You can see maybe I have a little over 10. And even though this is a five gallon, five and a half gallon, a little bit smaller than the 10 gallon, they started out with this few fry. I've been doing the same thing. I don't know what it is if I don't have enough females in that group, which I doubt. I deworm them. So uh, I'm about to put these guys in with the adults to kind of add to my breeding group to get maybe a larger number of them in there, even though there are a lot in there. 
And I'm gonna take the Java Moss that's in there now and put that in this tank and hopefully we get better luck. The Panda Guppies are doing really well. The colony grew a lot faster than I thought, which is awesome. And I'm really enjoying them. By the time this video is out, they should be available on the website. I started out with two adult males and a couple females, and we can see we had a lot of males sexed out. I like that I'm able to see them from the top-down view as well in this setup. When I did get them, originally they were in a pond setup. They looked really cool in a pond. I never thought of putting these guys in a pond before, but looking at them the top-down view, they look really great. And it's just about time for a new female to go in the Hang On Breeder Box. It's actually a little overdue. These fry are uh, definitely big enough to go in the main tank. I've been selecting the females that have the long dorsal fin and the darker body, like this female right here, to go in the Breeder Box and make sure that those fry make it, because I like the way that those females look. Not all of them look that way. Some of them look more standard, like this one right up front here. But I like that they're able to have the long dorsal fin and a little bit of a darker body. I think it adds to the strain. Doing some manual water changes and cleaning up some of these tanks here to prepare for the new rice fish. You can tell the coolie loaches are enjoying the large water change and having more room to swim around. There was like an algae ball uh, in this tank. This tank, I thought it was just Salvinia, but somehow duckweed made its way in it. So the whole tank, the top of the tank was covered in duckweed uh, right over the Salvinia. So I couldn't see it from this angle. Uh, when I went up top, covered in duckweed, hate duckweed, but looks like I got all of it. This tank, I'm gonna move the Longfin White Cloud Minnow Fry uh, just to open their tank for the new rice fish. These guys have grown super fast compared to last time when I was raising them. Took about six months for them to get a little bit bigger than this. I'd say right now they're about three months old, maybe four months. And this is about sellable size uh, for shipping. In a store, obviously you wouldn't want to sell them like this as long fin just because they're not showing the full traits yet that they're long fin. I would say in the next month or two, they'll start developing those extra long fins. Um, but for shipping, these are perfect size. You want them a little bit smaller when shipping. That's always better. And uh, I'm gonna move these guys over into that other tank, just because this tank is already kind of perfectly set up for breeding the rice fish. This string algae here has kind of become like a, a mop. Instead of java moss, I'm gonna use that because I'm out of java moss and I'll put some floating plant up front and they'll quarantine in, in this tank and eventually, you know, hopefully breed in there where I could take that algae mop out. And here's another tank with an even bigger mop of the string algae that's gone way out of control. But this will actually serve as a test to see if uh, the algae works just fine. I'm sure it will. If a acrylic yarn can act as a mop, I'm sure that the algae can act as a mop, but when you get the opportunity to test things, I like to take it. So I'm sure that this algae is filled with the orange Madaka rice fish eggs, and I do need more of them. Uh, this is my breeding group, and I'm currently sold out on the website. So I definitely need more. So we'll see if we have a bunch of eggs in here. I'm gonna transfer this string algae into another tank. Got these guys settled in and they look really good in a nice planted aquarium. And I'm gonna enjoy them a lot more in this setup. So I'm glad that I did this, that I had to do it uh, to make room for the new fish coming in. All the fry of the red ear albino koi guppies are big enough to, I think, free swim in the tank that they don't need the protection of this breeder net, especially because now I'm doing the hang on breeder box instead of having the net in there. But I figured I'd show before I take it away, this pearl weed that actually grew out of the water and it's kind of dripping into the um, net there. I think that looks really good. I wanna figure out a way to keep that or move it somewhere. Probably not gonna work. 
but I figured I'd get it on video so I could look at it later. It's funny how these guys think I was putting food in there. While we're here, we'll just take a look at the Iliadon first scene of the Trout Goodyear tank that is filled with life. See all the babies are growing really fast. And I'm pretty sure the second female dropped how many fry there are, which is nice to see that colony growing. And you can see I have the setup here, little photo shoot zone uh, where I take pictures of the what you see is what you get listings of the different types of driftwood and rock on the website. I combined both spawns of the blue daisies rice fish. I didn't realize how many I had. It didn't look like a lot, but there's probably like a hundred in here. There's a lot in the back. And when I was catching them, there were definitely at least 50 in each tank. So happy about that, that I finally have some good numbers on those guys. But this is the second tank that I have ready for the new rice fish that we ordered. Just got some of the random hygro species floating and the java moss there. Hopefully that grows out, gives them a lot of room to lay some eggs. We got the Miyuki rice fish looking really good. They're up high, so I don't get to enjoy the top down view. But when I do get on a step stool, these are the, the Miyukis with the nice glow to them. It's almost like a blue hue. I like these a lot more than the Platinums. And next to them, we have the Red Dragon Guppies still in quarantine. I'm surprised all the adults have made it so far, just because these are imports. We do see the fry free swimming. The females look amazing. I've never seen the Dumbo ears on the males in this stream, like I have on these guys. So I think I got a good quality batch. Really excited to get these guys in a 20 as soon as I get that new rack set up. Giving an update here on the 24 karat gold guppy tank. You can see we have a ton of fry, which is a really good sight to see after almost losing the colony. We had a female drop a bunch of fry in this breeder net here. There's a new one in there. After removing the fry that I think are big enough now, swimming around without getting eaten by the adults. We have the lemon blue eyed bristle nose plecos in here. We've got a nice male there. We have the short fin and long fin in here. Right now only the short fin are breeding. And take a look at the long fin ones here. I don't see any bristles on any of them yet. I have four of them. I'm hoping that I don't have four females. I'm hoping that one, one or two will sex out to be male. They're about a little over eight months old now, which is normally when you'd start seeing them sex out. Uh, so I'm not really optimistic about it. If I have four females, I'll be on the hunt for one male. Otherwise looking really good. That was another day in the fish room. Keep an eye out for all the videos that are gonna come out uh, with all the new tanks being set up on the new rack. I have pretty much unlimited access to driftwood and rock. So I'm excited to play with those and set those up. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, I know it's a long one and you aren't subscribed yet, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And we'll see you in the next one.